This is the January 7th, 2018 broadcast. I'd just like to take just a quick second to share with you all the God order, God news. God is ordained a black man, Professor Giohibo, with the ultimate intelligence of Eta sub infinity. Eta sub n is the formula which exactly represents intelligence, and n in that same formula is the level of that intelligence. God has designed that end for Professor Joyibo to be infinity, hence eta sub infinity. Since black people share the same genes as Professor Joyibo, God has now reordained the black race to be the most intelligent, richest, as well as the most undefeatable race. God Almighty's Grand Unified Theorem, nicknamed God, is a revelation from God which infallibly proves that all theorems, which are also called everything that exists, and all equations, also called morphisms, which can be isomorphisms as well as polymorphisms, past, present, and future, originate out of one invariant, GI, with orthogonal components GIJ, and with the divergence of GIJ, J equals zero. That's also known as a change. In mathematics, you can use any term or choose any term to define a quantity. Just because God gets defined GI to be God doesn't automatically prove that GI is God. For example, one can say milk originates out of the store. If the store happens to be the origin point for the milk, you can replace the term originates out of with its equivalent created by for the store. We all know, however, that milk does not originate out of the store. It originates out of the cows. So you cannot replace the term originates out of with the equivalent of the created by. However, Gagat infallibly proved that GI is the ultimate origin of all theorems or everything that exists. So the phrase originates out of can be replaced with the term created by in the case of GI. And this proves that GI represents here and defined here represents God, since God can be defined as the creator of everything. Now that God has been infallibly defined as GIJ, God's existence is the next step that we have to prove. And that, even though it seems difficult, it's very easy to prove because God's existence is infallibly proven if Gagat can prove that anything or something exists. And that's easily done by proving that you exist or I exist. In other words, proving a human being exists is the proving of the existence of God. Existence of a human being is a proof of the existence of the GIJ. Because GIJ has been infallibly proven to be the ultimate origin of everything. Therefore, because a human being exists, it infallibly proves the existence of GIJ, which has been infallibly proven to be the definition of God. Therefore, the existence of human beings infallibly proves the existence of God. Now, morphisms, as I was explaining before, they can be isomorphisms. They can also be polymorphisms. They're known more commonly as equations. What these do, what these morphisms do, is they map realities onto a mathematical space in the same way that your senses, like your eyes, your ears, your nose, and uh, your hands in terms of touch, all of them map realities onto your brain, which is the, can be seen as the mathematical space. And these polymorphisms, or morphisms in general, measure intelligence. The more polymorphisms a creature has, the more intelligent it is. So what's important to understand is since GIJ, which infallibly defines God, has the totality of all equations or all polymorphisms, GIJ and hence God constitutes the totality of all intelligence. The Gagat solution, A to sub N, which we also discussed before, which all come out of GIJ or God, fundamentally re represents all isomorphisms. It also fundamentally represents all polymorphisms and therefore contains all of intelligence. It is also infallibly proved that God not only contains all of intelligence, but God is all of intelligence. God amazingly planted all eta sub n's and hence all of intelligence inside the brains of Professor Gabriel Audu Ogibo and blessed him with the ultimate or totality of all intelligence with which to understand God or everything. 
This is how God ordained Professor Gyoyibo with the totality of all intelligence or the ultimate intelligence, which can be modestly stated as God has ordained Professor Gyoyibo, the greatest genius and the most intelligent human being ever created. Since the black race share Professor Gyoyibo's genes, God has ordained black people by extension, the most intelligent race, and this has been confirmed by Gottingen University, as well as Yale University's research study, which I'm going to pull up for you all now to see. You can just bear in mind, I'm going to bring it up so that you all can see it. Just bear in mind, there's some technical difficulty, but just for the next, bring it up on the screen right now. Can you all see the House Year 2005 celebration page in front of you? Yes. Praise God. This is the celebration for, uh, of Gottingen University of a mathematician in the European society called Professor Carl Frederick Gauss. For those who do not know who Professor Carl Frederick Gauss is, here is his Wikipedia page. You see the Wikipedia page for Carl Frederick Gauss in front of you. Yes, I see it. Okay. Yes. What's important yes. to understand is, as you can see here, Johann Carl Frederick Gauss was a German mathematician who made significant contributions to many fields, including number theory, algebra, statistics, analysis, differential geometry, geodesy, geophysics, mechanics, electrostatics, magnetic fields, astronomy, matrix theory, and optics. Sometimes referred to as the Princeps Mathematicorum, which is Latin translated into English is the foremost of mathematicians, as well as the greatest mathematician since antiquity. This is how Gauss is recognized in the European system as the greatest mathematician in the European system. So what you can understand is he died in 1855. In the year 2005, as you can see here from the Gauss year 2005 celebration, he selected the greatest mathematics works to honor Professor Carl Frederick Gauss. Can you all follow so far? Yes, I follow. Yeah, we Praise follow. Praise God. So what's important to understand is you can see here the number one work selected to honor Gauss in the two, uh, 2005 Gauss year 2000 celebration is the work by Professor Yibo, uh, which was Kagat, or they called it Grand Unified Theorem. Can you all see that at NR26? It's being circled by the cursor. Can you all see that in front of you right now? Can you see it? Yeah, we do. I'm sorry? Yeah. Yes. Praise God. To understand this ranking of Gagat as the number one work to honor Professor Carl Frederick Gauss, we have to see the runners up or potential people in the company which Gagat was placed in, in terms of understanding why this position of Professor Ebo's work as number one work took place and why it happened. If you go to NR19 or week 19, you'll see the work by Sir Michael Tia and Daniel Iago Nitzer titled Fields Medalist Lectures. Can everyone see that? Can you see it? Hello? Yes, we see it. Praise God. That's important that everyone sees that. So why is that important? Sir Professor Michael T, if you go to his Wikipedia page, if you see in front of him, Sir Professor Fran My sorry, Sir Professor Michael Francis Atia is a current day English mathematician specializing in geometry. If you go to the second paragraph, you'll see here in the second sentence, it says, he has been the president of the Royal Society, but more importantly, the master of college in Cambridge from 1990 to 1997. Why is this important? The master of Trinity College is the prestigious chair at Cambridge University in England in the mathematics department. He has held the chair, which was one time held by another famous mathematician in European society known as Sir Professor Isaac Newton. Can you see the page in front of you? Can you see the page in front of you all? Yes. Praise God. 
Sir Professor Isaac Newton is considered also to be one of the greatest European mathematicians, along with Newton, Euler, and Gauss make up the top three. Now, Newton is kind of considered more of a physicist rather than a pure mathematician, so Gauss will have some edge over Newton, but Gauss had a lot of respect for Newton. As you can see, Newton lived from 1642 to 1727. So it's important to understand he came before Gauss did, but Gauss had a lot of respect for him. So you can understand a man like Sir Professor Michael Atiyah, who was a successor to Sir Professor Isaac Newton, that already alone could have placed him as the number one work to honor Gauss. Can you all see that? Can you all see that? Hello? Yes. Praise God. In addition, if you see here in the last sentence of the uh, second paragraph, he was awarded the Fields Medal in 1966. What is the Field Medal? The Field Medal, if you look at the Wikipedia page coming up in front of the screen, can you see the Field Medal Wikipedia page in front of you right now? Yes. Hello? Yes, we see it. Praise God. The Field Medal is a prize awarded to two, three, or four mathematicians under 40 years of age at the International Congress of International Mathematics Union, IMU, which takes place every four years. What's important to understand is the next sentence, which is the Field Medal is with the Abel Prize. You can ignore the Abel Prize for the moment, but just take in consideration the Field Medal. The Field Medal is viewed as the highest honor a mathematician can receive. And the Field Medal has often been described as the mathematician's Nobel Prize. Can you all see that? Yes, yeah, see it. Praise God. So you have to understand the Field Medal is equivalent to Nobel Prize, but specifically for mathematics. It's an award that was created in 1936 and has been awarded every four years since that point. So what's important to understand is that Sir Professor Michael Thea has won this award that you see in front of you. We're going to scroll down and see the list of field medalists. Can you all see the list of field medalists coming up on your screen? Yeah, we see it. Okay. If you put the year 1966, like the Wikipedia page for said for Michael Tia, Sir Professor Michael Tia, you will see, as you can see in 1966, you see his name here. Can you all see it? Yeah, we see it. Scott. So you can see Sir Professor Michael T has won this award, which is equivalent to Nobel Prize in mathematics. If you also count the number of people who have won this award, as you can see, I'm scrolling down quickly so you can see the people who have won this award since 1936. If you count the number of people who have won this award up until the year 2005, where the Gauss Year 2005 celebration took place, you will see that there are 44 Nobel Prize award equivalents or field medalists. Do you both understand this? Hello? Yes, we do. Praise God. Yes. So what's important to understand regarding this issue is that the work was listed in week 19 as 44 Nobel Prize Award equivalents, including Sir Professor Michael Atiyah himself. So why is that important? Gottingen could have easily ranked the work at week 19, a work by successor to Sir Professor Isaac Newton with the Sir Professor Michael Tia. They could have ranked that number one work to honor Gauss. Sir Professor Michael Tia also has won a field medal, which is a award equivalent to Nobel Prize. That could have been another reason why Gottingen could have ranked that work as number one work to honor Professor Carl Frederick Gauss. And the work contained, the field medalist lectures contains all the field medalists up until that point. So that means it has 44 field medalists or Nobel Prize Award equivalents in there. That could have been another reason why they could have ranked that work as the number one work to honor Gauss. Can you all see that so far? Yes. Gottingen, however, very painfully ranked that work inferior to Gagat. That is why it is placed seven places below where Gagat is placed. Do you all see? Can you all see that? Yes. The message that I'm trying to get across here is that Gottingen has seen the value of Gagan and has declared Gagan as being worth more than 44 Nobel Prize equivalents or field medals. Can you see that? Yes, I see it. 
Praise God. So the next one we're going to go to is NR23 or week 23. If you see the names here, you'll see Alexei Viktorovich Bozhinov and Anatoly Tifermenko. Now, the second name is the name we're going to be focusing on. Who is Anatoly Tifermenko, you ask? Well, let's look at his Wikipedia page. Anatoly Timovich Fomenko is a current-day Russian mathematician and professor at Moscow State University. He's also a member of the Russian Academy of Sciences. Why is that important? Fomenko is a successor to another famous European mathematician. First of all, can you see Fomenko's page in front of you? Hello? Yeah. Chris yes. Chris If you go to the next page, which is Professor Leonard Euler. Professor Erlen of Euler is a German-Swiss mathematician born in 1707 and died in 1783. He, if you go to the second paragraph, you'll see here the last sentence. He spent most of his adult life in St. Petersburg, Russia, which means he spent most of his life in the same Russian university systems that Fermenko is currently in today. So what this means is Fermenko is a successor to Professor Leonard Euler. And Euler is considered, along with Newton and Gauss, to be the top three European mathematicians in the European society. Do you all follow so far? Yes. Praise God for that. So what's important to understand is Fermenko is a successor to Euler. Euler, like Newton, got a lot of respect from Gauss because they both were pre predecessors. So you have to understand Gauss had a lot of respect for Euler. So Fermenko is a successor to Euler. That could have been the number one reason to play, or reason to place Euler's, uh, sorry, Fermenko's work as the number one work to honor Gauss. However, Hockenden very painfully ranked the work of Professor Fermenko inferior to Gagat, placing it three places below where Gagat was placed at week 23 as opposed to week 26. Can you see that? Yes. Praise God for that. Now, let's go to week 24. You'll see the name David Hilbert. Who is Professor David Hilbert, you ask? You see the Wikipedia page for Professor David Hilbert in front of you. I'm sorry? Praise God. Yes. Professor David Hilbert, born in 1862, died in 1943, was a German mathematician. He is recognized as one of the most influential as well as universal mathematicians of the 19th and early 20th centuries. What's important to understand about Hilbert is he's considered to be the last of the great mathematicians. He is also a successor to Gauss at Rockingham. If you look on the right side of the page, you see the institutions he was associated with. You see the institution that's highlighted in the right-hand side of the screen, the institutions. And you see where what's highlighted in the institutions on the right hand side of the page in front of you? Yeah, we see. Gottingen yeah. University. He headed the mathematics department at Gottingen after Gauss. So in for all practical purposes, he is a successor of Gauss. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Yes. So what's also important is that Hilbert, if you scroll down further, you'll see the doctoral students, people that have PhDs in mathematics under Hilbert. Now, it's not easy to get a PhD in mathematics. Even when you do, most of the times those people get PhDs, they don't become stars in the field of mathematics. As you can see, can you see on the right-hand side the list of the doctoral students? Yes. yes. Gauss has, sorry, Hilbert has the distinction of overseeing 69 PhDs in mathematics. And all of them became stars in the field of mathematics. That's very important to understand. So what's important to understand regarding this is that Hilbert is considered to be the last of the great mathematicians, a successor to Gauss at Göttingen University as both head of the mathematics department as well as overseeing 69 PhDs in mathematics. Any one of those could have made Ga Hilbert the number one work to honor Professor Carl Frederick Gauss, especially coming from Göttingen University. Can you all understand and see that point? Yes. Göttingen very painfully ranked the work of Hilbert inferior 
to Gaga, which is why Hilbert's work is placed at week 24 as opposed to week 26, two places below. Can you all see that? Yes. Praise yes. God. So what's important to understand here is that Hilbert was placed at week 24, as you can see here on the screen, as opposed to week 26. So what is so special about Gagat that made it the number one work to honor Professor Carl Frederick Gauss? First, let's explain why, sorry about that. Let's explain why Gagat was placed as the number one work to honor Professor Carl Frederick Gauss. As you know, there are 52 weeks in a year and Gottingen selected for each week of that year a work, to, a great mathematics work to honor Gauss. In statistics, when you deal for distribution, you deal with what's called a Gaussian bell curve, when you deal for deviation from a standard distribution. So the middle point is always the peak or the highest point of the curve. If you divide 52 by two, you get 26. Can you see that? Can you see that? Yes. 52 divided 